So what has the COVID-19 vaccine strategy got to do with R0? Well, stay tuned and find out. My name is Greg Martin. I'm going to tell you all about it. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the real power of R0 in that R0 helps us work out what the vaccine coverage needs to be. In other words, how many people need to be vaccinated, what proportion of the population needs to be vaccinated for us to finally beat this thing. This is the path to victory. This is how we win. This is how we win. This is how we win. But before we get into it, a quick thank you to USC for supporting the creation of this video. If you're thinking of doing an MPH program online, USC have got a fantastic program, great curriculum, fantastic faculty. I'll tell you more about it at the end of this video. So we start off with some kind of virus or bacteria infecting a person. After what we call the incubation period, this person develops symptoms. And now the disease can spread, but it can only spread to susceptible people. In other words, those people who are not currently infected or don't have any immunity due to previous infections or vaccinations. So in this example, that's everybody. This is a totally susceptible population. And the number of people who will be infected as a result of one case in a totally susceptible population is called the basic reproductive number, or R0. In this case, the R0 is 8. If R0 is greater than 1, that means that each case will infect more than one person. Then the disease will spread and will have an outbreak or an epidemic. If R0 is exactly 1, then each person will infect exactly one other person and the disease will just simmer in the community and will have what we call an endemic disease. And of course, if it's less than one, then the disease will quickly burn out. So in this case, we've got an R0 of eight. So eight people in the totally susceptible population get sick. But you'll notice that something has changed. We don't have a totally susceptible population anymore. The number of possible people that the virus can infect has gone down because of people that are either currently infected in orange or that have recovered in the set. So they're immune, they're in blue or they've died and we don't have them in this diagram. Now each infected person is likely to spread the disease to fewer than eight people. And we call this new number the effective reproductive number, or just R. And this effective reproductive number, or R, changes as the outbreak unfolds. And so now we've got an R of just less than two. The virus is still spreading in the community. And as the number of susceptible individuals becomes less, R drops even further. And in some outbreaks, you might even run out of susceptible people completely. And by the way, you don't need absolutely everybody to have been infected for an epidemic to burn out. All you need is a sustained R of less than one. Hmm, now, you wonder why I used the word sustained there. Well, for many pathogens, and by the way, we think that this is the case for COVID-19, your immunity doesn't last indefinitely. So previously infected people will once again become susceptible. So, uh-oh, what are we seeing happening here? What's going on? And suddenly we're back into outbreak mode. We might get a second wave because the number of susceptible people is actually going up as recovered people's immunity begins to wane. And so as you can see, the epidemic could continue indefinitely and we might never get to this elusive herd immunity, which incidentally is just a sustained R of less than one. And this is where vaccines come in. We know we're not going to get 100% of the population vaccinated. We'll get some percentage of the population vaccinated. We call that the vaccine coverage. And as your vaccine coverage goes up, the percentage of the people that are vaccinated, the R value goes down because there are fewer susceptible people. These people are now immune. And we know that R of 1 is a watershed where it's more than 1, there's going to be an outbreak or a continued epidemic. And if it's less than 1, this thing's going to burn out. So we need to calculate the vaccine coverage that will translate into an R of 1. Any coverage over and above that number, even if it's small, will translate into the eventual burnout of the epidemic. In this example, we've got an R0 of 8. So the whole population is susceptible. The disease will transmit it to 8 other people. How many of those eight need to be immune, in other words, vaccinated, for only one person to be infected? In other words, R would be equal to one. Well, clearly the answer is seven of the eight, right? Because we want to know what the immunity status of the population needs to be so that it'll translate into just one person being infected, as in this diagram. And that means 87.5% of the population need to be vaccinated, right? 0 0.875 times 100 equals 87.5% of the population. If anything more than 87.5% of the population is vaccinated and so immune, this epidemic will burn out. And of course, this works for any R0, right? It's simply R0 minus one over R0 times 100. In other words, if all the people that would have gotten the disease are now immune, with the exception of one, hence the minus one, then just one person will get the disease. And that's the definition of R equals one, our watershed threshold for beating the epidemic. So let's try this out for COVID-19. We think that the R0 for COVID-19 is about 2.5. So we need a vaccine coverage of 
Well, 2.5 minus 1 divided by 2.5 times 100 is equal to 60%. Anything more than 60% of the population being vaccinated will translate into COVID-19 going away completely. This assumes that the vaccine is 100% effective. That is unlikely to be the case, in which case we need a concomitant increase in the proportion of people that get vaccinated to make up to this 60% of the population being immune so that we can beat this thing. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Please leave your comments, thoughts, suggestions, etc., etc., in the comment section below. Share this video with anyone you think might be interested in it. Subscribe to this channel if you want to see more videos like this. And of course, stay and watch another video right now. Now, if you're interested in working in global health or in public health, then doing a master's degree in public health or an MPH is a really good next step. Now, being a full-time student isn't always possible due to other life commitments, so you might want to study online as a distance learning student. USC has got an absolutely world-class online MPH program. I know the faculty, I've looked at the curriculum, I've worked with people that have graduates from USC. I highly recommend it. I'm going to put a link in the description below. You can click on that and learn more. If you're interested in global health, then Richard Skolnick's book, Global Health 101, is an absolute must. Global Health 101 is always my starting point whenever I research a new global health topic. So, highly, highly, highly recommended. I hope you found all this useful. Until next time, take care.